questions and answers, it's now time for member statements. I recognize the member for Essex. Good morning, Madam Speaker. Syncreon is an automotive company which employs people in Essex County and in the surrounding areas. And Syncreon does work for Stellantis. But in uh, July of this year, Stellantis announced that they were going to bring some of that work back into the Stellantis shops, and that means about 300 Syncreon employees have now been displaced. But they have hope, and that's because a new Labour Action Centre has been opened for those Syncreon automotive workers. The Labour, the Labour Action Centre offers a holistic approach to job seeking with peer-to-peer -peer support from people who come from directly from the ranks of Syncreon. The centre will provide vital community support and direct assistance and will help Syncreon employees with new employment, retraining and upgrading of their skills. The new Labour Action Centre is a partnership between the Ontario government and Unifor. The Ontario government is putting in $360,000 and Unifor is making an in-kind contribution of $45,000. I want to thank the, the Minister of Labour, Immigration, Training and Skills Development for his support, and I want to join him in saying we will never stop working for workers. Thank you. For the member's statements, I recognize the member for Toronto St. Paul's. Thank you, Speaker. On November 23rd, Kartik Saini, a 20-year-old international student, was struck, dragged and killed in my community at Young and St. Clair by a Ford F-250 pickup truck. Kartik was a cyclist. He was riding his bike home that day. He deserved to get home safely. All road users, including vulnerable road users, deserve to get home safely. They do not have a two tons of steel protecting them. On November 30th, a ghost bike memorial ride was organized with hundreds from the cycling community and allies in attendance to honor Kartik. Speaker, we must have tougher road safety rules to save lives. We must implement a Vision Zero Provincial Road Safety Strategy to reduce deaths and injuries on Ontario's roads to zero. Make the Fairness for Road Users Act and the Protecting Vulnerable Road Users Act law today to help families and communities find justice and some comfort if that is ever possible. These laws will make our roads safer for all. I want to thank Cycle Toronto, Advocacy for Respect for Cyclists, Bicycle Mayor of Toronto, Bells on Young, Centre for Active Transportation, Toronto Community Bikeways Coalition, the Bike Brigade, Darnell Harris, ED of Our Greenway, Robert, Robin Richardson of Young for All, and so many others who are leaders advocating for safe roads for vulnerable users and overall low-carbon modes of transportation, Speaker, like walking, biking, and taking transit. Young for All has been appealing for our Midtown Toronto Young Complete Street Pilot to be permanent. Complete streets are safer streets that take into account the needs of all users. I support their work because, Speaker, everyone deserves to get home safely. Thank you. Further debate, so further round of member statements, I recognize the member for Whitby. Bridge Farm and my riding strives to enrich the lives of persons of all ages with special needs by providing opportunities to enjoy experiences in farming nature, outdoor recreation, and other activities, and to share those experiences with family and friends. Speaker, this past Saturday, I joined the hardworking staff from the farm and its many supporters from across the region of Durham to celebrate the 33 years Winreach has provided impactful programs and services. Speaker, I believe that the heart of any community like Whitby resides in the people who create ongoing meaningful change and the support of those that need extra care and attention. Now, Speaker, days like today when we're celebrating the 33 years are a celebration of Winreach Farms history, but they're also a chance to re rededicate ourselves to the future, to ensure that Winreach Farm continues to be a safe place for those with physical, emotional, and intellectual disabilities. And Speaker, as their member of provincial parliament, I dedicate myself to continuing the great work of Winreach Farm. Member statements. I recognize the member for University of Rosedale. Thank you, Speaker. This morning I was in committee on Bill 39, debating one of the most unsettling and troubling bills that has passed through this legislature in decades. 
Bill 39 is an attack on the fundamental tenets of re representative democracy, on citizen voice, on citizen say. By giving mayors permission to pass laws with just one third of votes, the Premier has made it clear that representative democracy and majority rule don't matter much to him. And it won't just stop in Toronto and Ottawa. Minority rule could come to any municipality in Ontario through regulatory decree. We are living through a time where democracy is under threat. Who would have thought that the greatest threat to democracy here in Ontario would come from the Premier? This bill will make Ontario an appalling first. No democratic government across North America makes rules using minority rule except for us. Bill 39 is an attack on farmland and our greenbelt. We are one of seven regions in the world that grows more food than we need. And in this era of climate crisis and food insecurity, our farmland should be expanded, not paved over. But paving over is exactly what this government is doing by hiving off a section of the Greenbelt for development owned by some of government's largest PC donors, giving them the opportunity to make untold profit at our expense. We can do better than this. Homes are for people. Democracy is for all of us. Repeal Bill 39. Member for Brampton East. Uh, thank you, Speaker. This morning, I'm proud to share some amazing news for the great people of Brampton. Our government is committed to improving and innovating the way people provide services across the province. Uh, uh, the way we provide services to people across the province, which is why I'm so proud to announce that our government is implementing a new remote queuing pilot project that is aimed at streamlining and innovating our drive test centers, addressing current wait times and improving the customer experience. This pilot project will start with Drive Test Brampton and in a matter of days expand to Drive Test Metro East in Toronto. Speaker, this will allow customers to join the queue for services prior to arriving at Drive Test Brampton and track their uh, place as well as estimated wait time. These new changes now mean that the residents of Brampton no longer have to wait in line and will be updated with an SMS text message as they approach the front of the queue. Under the pilot, customers can join the queue simply by clicking a link available on the Drive Test website. Speaker, this good news doesn't just end here. We're also expanding the hours of operations of Brampton Drive Test, increasing the number of customer service agents to further reduce wait times and queues. Our government is committed to reducing wait times and innovating services, and this is the government that is getting it done for the people of Brampton and for the people of Ontario. Thank you, Speaker. The next member statement, the member for Kiwetnong. Uh, Speaker, uh, I rise today uh, and stand in solidarity with Gracineros as they celebrated their 20th anniversary of their successful logging blockade on December 2nd. This logging blockade was an action of land protection for members of Gracineros. Elders, youth, uh, community and council members showed, showed up to say no to unwanted resource development. They stop loggers on the highway in the middle of winter to protect their lands. The people of Grassy Narrows have seen firsthand the effects clear-cut logging was having on their treaty territories. Since then, they have prevented industrial logging on their 7,000 square kilometer homeland that saved over 15 million trees and helped build the movement for indigenous sovereignty and land back. Also, Grassy Narrows has suffered from environmental degradation due to the dumping of mercury in the English and Wabagoon rivers in the 1960s. These actions poisoned their water, damaged the environment, and they paid in full with ongoing health consequences for the people today. Free, prior, informed consent are more than just words. They are actions, solidarity with Grassy Narrows land defenders. Miigwech. 
Thank you very much. Member statements. Member for Beaches, East York. Thank you very much, and good morning, everyone. What do you think of when you imagine holiday dinner? Golden turkey with fluffy mashed potatoes and gravy, latkes with sour cream and applesauce. Unfortunately, food won't make it to the tables of all Ontarians for the holidays this year. 16.1% of Ontarian households face food insecurity, and that number is sadly only growing. This problem has only accelerated in recent years. In beautiful beaches East York, the crisis has many turning to food banks, which have been seeing a record number of people coming out to use their services. More than ever, food banks need our help so they can serve our communities best. I'm proud to showcase some of the organizations in my riding. The Grant AME Church provides food hampers to over 250 families in need every Christmas and is currently accepting donations of food, personal care items, diapers, toys, gift cards, and monetary donations. Community Center 55's Hamper Share Christmas program serves over 100 families this year, and they are looking for new unwrapped toys, monetary donations, and gift cards for teens. The Grace Pasco Care Center at Calvary Baptist Church has been operating for over 60 years and is accepting food and monetary donations for hampers. During this season and all year round, we must choose compassion and show kindness to others. My team and I will be volunteering at and making donations to food banks and in our neighbourhood over the break, and we welcome you to do so too with your teams. Thank you and happy holidays, and thanks for listening so intently. Member statements. The member for Don Valley North. Thank you, Speaker. An alumni friend's son, David, recently died while studying at university. His parents are, are overcome by the loss. My heart filled condolences to David's family and friends. Speaker, David was an exceptional child, full of potential. Suicides robbed him of the future he richly deserved. But sadly, he is not alone. David's parents hope this story will prevent other tragedies. Speaker, the weight of academic and social expectations may feel crushing to vulnerable youth. We must pay attention to their struggles. First-year college or university students are often away from the security of home for the first time. The pressure to achieve success is overwhelming. Speaker, a call on high schools, universities, colleagues, families, and peers can all take action to support our youth and arm them with the tools of resilience and hope. Speaker, our government is ready to play a role as well. Students in need of help can find it at any one of 22 youth wellness hubs across Ontario. These hubs offer mental health and addiction support, social services navigation, and primary care service to anyone aged 12 to 25, all on the walk-in basis. They offer our youth a safe space to express themselves and speak about their issues. Their life may depend on it. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Etobicoke Lakeshore. You know, the weather outside is frightful, but this house is so delightful. Well, most days, anyways, which is why I'm pleased to buck up the festive spirit in this place and share some holiday tidings from the great riding of Etobicoke Lakeshore. And before I do that, I want to give a shout out to my Uncle Robert, who's watching today, because I know he's with my mom this week. So thanks for your help, Uncle Robert. You know, over this last special week, uh, we've had some tree lighting at the Kingsway BIA. Next, this past weekend, oh, it was a busy one. On Saturday, I walked the, 20, uh, the 32nd Lakeshore Santa Claus Parade, and thanks to the volunteers and the families who braved the wind and rain, and oh, did it rain, to wait to see Santa Claus. Next, it was off to the Skate with Santa and the Franklin Horner Christmas Market, where I purchased some great gifts. And then off to Great Lakes Brewery for the Hops for Hunger food drive and holiday market, where a dollar from each sale of white eggnog stout was generously donated to the Daily Bread Food Bank. <laughs> Lastly, this holiday message wouldn't be complete without a shout out to our great staff and our constituency offices, 
and the team here at Queen's Park. I would like to mention one staff in particular, Joe Gristo, who has created Christmas cards, calendars, and countless communi communication pieces for all of the Ontario PC Caucus members and our leaders for the past 36 years. Joe, thank you for your dedicated work, your service with a smile. You have always been there when you need me, even when I show up in your office with that last-minute request. Thank you. You have never let me down. Thank you for your service. And in closing, Mr. Speaker, the season is slowly ending, and there's no election pending. Pour to order before I go. Let it snow. Let it snow. Let it snow. Thank you, thank you. That concludes our member statements for this morning. Oh, there's, I'm sorry, one more. Member for Chatham Kent Leamington. Good morning, Speaker, and thank you. Speaker, as a lifelong learner, I find it fascinating to listen to the tributes offered by colleagues on behalf of our former members. It's in this spirit that I want to offer my sincere gratitude to one of our most esteemed past colleagues and living legends who continues to contribute by sharing his unique experiences, offering sage, relevant advice on a wide variety of topics to many of our members in this House. Few people have served this province as well and as nobly as the Honourable Darcy McHugh. Born in Chatham on January 31, 1933, he remains active in the community and closely follows politics and current events from his lovely home, Bally McHugh, in beautiful Cedar Springs, Chatham, Kent. Elected MPP five times between 1963 and 77, McHugh was mockingly dubbed the Duke of Kent by opposition members and wore that title as a badge of honour ever since. As Treasurer of Ontario, Minister of Municipal Affairs, and Minister of Energy during his time in office, McHugh created regional governments to bring more efficient services to our citizens and fought to achieve budget surpluses long before they were fashionable. I feel fortunate for my friendship with the honorable, my honorable predecessor and privileged to, to continue to glean insights from his lived experiences, a gentleman who is so delightful in any social setting and who continues to offer highly relevant solutions to contemporary matters with a level of competence, kindness, and charm that I hope to one day aspire to. Thank you, Darcy, for continuing to contribute to our communities. Introduction of visitors. We have with us in the speaker.